Greetings, students. Let's discuss our test 2-5. Let's begin. Question 1, find the slope. So we're looking at the change in y over the change in x. So here the y values have not changed at all. 11 minus 11 is equal to 0. That's the numerator. The x's, however, have decreased by 27. Negative 9 minus 18, decrease of 27. My slope is actually 0 this time because the top is 0, the numerator is 0. But if the top wasn't 0, we'd have it, if the numerator wasn't 0, we'd have it out of 27. Question 2, solve for x. We are looking at alternate interior angles. 11x minus 7 is equal to 70. Alternate interior. Add 7 to 70. And then divide 77 by 11 to get 7. Now they're either going to be equal or supplementary. Remember, if the angle opens the same amount, it's equal. So when you're looking at this, you can look at this and you can think to yourself, does it open the same amount or does it open less? So I got myself a little sticky note here. So this angle is this big. I'm going to fold the paper to the size of the angle. It's this big. Now you don't, you don't need a paper to do this. You can use your eyeballs. But this angle is this big. This angle is the same size. Look, it's the same size. And your eyes should be able to tell you that they're the same size. Looking at this, look, they're the same size. The angles, the opening. If they were next to each other, if they're adjacent, they'd be supplementary, and then you'd make it equal to 180 after you add them. Yeah, yeah. So that's what we're doing there again. Question three, point slope. We got it on the board there. Y take away the Y value. So Y take away negative 3, which when you take away negative 3, that's the same as adding 3, equals M. M is this number, 1 third. X take away the X value. This is the X value, positive 3. So X minus 3. This is a very important form because when you start getting into the conics, there are always opposites. The, snow, the numbers are always opposites for the point, for the center, for the conics. In this case, it's just regular equations. But this point goes in as opposite values. X was positive 3 is negative 3. Y was negative 3, positive 3. Let's see there. All right, triangle sum theorem. Every triangle adds to 180. So let's take 133 and 26. Let's see what that makes. That's 9, 5, 159. That means the remaining amount is going to equal the 3x. 180 minus 159. That's 21. 3x equals 21. Therefore, x is 7. 3 into 21 is 7, in other words. Number 5, the exterior angle theorem. The outside angle is equal to the sum of the remote interior angles. In other words, the angle is not next to it. So this angle is equal to these two put together, 113 plus 26. And again, this question might be reworded. I might ask you for one of the angles inside. If I ask you for this angle and give you this angle, you're going to subtract these two. Or if I ask you for this angle and give you this angle, you're going to subtract these two. Exterior angle theorem, the remote interior angles is equal to the exterior angle. Question 6, Pythagorean theorem. When you square the legs of a right triangle, you get the hypotenuse. The legs are the shorter sides. The hypotenuse is the longest. So x squared plus 6 squared equals 10 squared. You can rearrange the x and the 6 here. They don't have to be that order, but the 10 must be by itself. x squared plus 36 is equal to 64. x 10 squared is not 64, 100. I was doing the next step already in my head x squared is equal to 64, x is 8. And again, we're using only positive 8 here because lengths cannot be negative. But when you see this next year, length can be positive and negative, uh, not lengths. Square roots can be positive and negative when that's x squared. So next year you'll write plus and minus 8. But here it's plus 8 because lengths cannot be negative. Triangles can't have negative sides. That's why we only have positive 8 here. Next question, question 7. 
write the statement that says the triangles are congruent. So we're looking at what triangle is equal to what triangle. So you can start off here on the left or here on the right. Pick a triangle. Triangle J, K, I is equal to congruent to triangle. Which one goes with J? This has two curves on it. D goes with J. D. Which one goes with K? It has one curve. C has one curve. And then I goes with itself in this case. That's not always the case. Make sure they have the same amount of arcs or the same amount of curves there. It's got three, it's got three. All right, so make sure you match it properly. The tongue of the triangles are congruent. They're going to be congruent if they are state how you know. Well, this is a s angle, side, angle. Again, I'm looking for one of the congruent statements. ASA, SAS, SSS, or angle, angle, side. Sorry. So this has got two angles and then the side in between is shared. Angle, side, angle. I don't want yes or no on this question number eight. If you keep putting yes, yes or no, you're going to keep missing all the points there. I want to know why one of these four. Pick from one of the four. Just pick one. You've got a better chance than putting yes or no there. Find the missing length. All right, so this is 22. This is a mid-segment. Look, these are equal lengths. These are equal lengths. It's a mid-segment. So this length, PQ, is half of GE. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to divide it by 2. I'm going to get 11. Now if I gave you the inside length and asked you for the out one, outside one, you'd double it. Because the outer one is double the inner one. <laughs> Alright, next item here. This is a median, meaning that if you look at the length from x to z, x to z and then c to z, c to z is half as much as x to z. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to times this one by 2. Times by 2. So that's going to become 2x plus 6. And that will equal xz. 3x minus 1. 2x from 3x is x. 6 and 1 is 7. x is 7 there. Alright, there's the front. we got 10 questions there. 50 points. 5 points each. Super simple. Question 11. PB is 6. So this length here is 6. 6. RP is 10. This length here is 10. Find RC. Well, RC would be the same as RB because those two little triangles at the top are congruent. And this is a Pythagorean theorem problem. So I'm looking at 10 squared, which is 100. 6 squared, which is 36. I'm going to subtract because I want one of the legs of this triangle. This is a right triangle, just like this one. These two are the same size. So subtract, and I get 64. I need to square root it to get the actual length of the side. 8 is the actual length of the side. Next one, angle bisector. Angle 2 is 13x minus 1. Oh, that's good. X, Z, Y is 25X. X, Z, Y is actually twice as big as angle 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to time this one by 2. It's going to become 26X minus 2. I times both of it by 2, the whole thing, times by 2, equals 25X. Well, 25 from 26 is 1, or 26 from 25 is also 1. You can do it either way. 25 from 26 is 1, X. So x minus 2 is equal to 0. x is equal to 2. So again, on this one, x, z, y is twice as big as angle 2 because it's a bisector. 1 and 2 are the same. x, z, y is twice the size. All right, so two sides of the triangle have, have been given. Find the range of the possible third side. So I'm going to add them together. 10 plus 9 is equal to 19. The third side must be less than 19. It can't be equal to 19 or greater than 19. It's got to be less than 19. And it has to be 10 minus 9 is equal to 1, bigger than 1, between 1 and 19. Now, if you don't want to write it as an inequality, use the words. You can use the words between 
1 and 19 for your answer as well. It means the same thing. All right, order the angles from biggest, from smallest to biggest. Here's the smallest side. It goes with angle C. Angle C is the smallest. Here's the next smallest side. It goes with angle D. The sides go with the angles across from them or opposite to them or not connected to them. 22, side 22 is not connected to angle D. Side 15, this side 15 is not connected to angle C. So C is the smallest, followed by D, followed by E. 24 goes with E. Smallest to largest. Solve the proportion, cross multiply. If you want to reduce this first, that's perfectly fine too. 6x equals 36. x is 6. And if I'd reduced it at the start, I would have gotten 2 thirds, and I could have probably done this another way. Made it even easier than what I had. Alright, here, cross multiply. Make sure you distribute the 8 to the k and the 5. 8k minus 40 equals 6k. Perfect. 8 from 6 is 2, and it's actually negative. And then 2 into 40 is 20. K is 20. Perfect. All right. The polygons in the pair are similar. Solve for x. So what I have here is medium side to medium side, long side to long side. Sorry. Short to short, medium to medium, long to long. You don't need all three of the lengths. You just need two. So let's look at this 5x plus 2. Would I rather deal with the 12 or the 20? Hopefully your answer was the 12, because it's smaller. So let's put the 5x plus 2 with the 12. Equals. Which side goes with the 5x plus 2, the 15, the 9, or the 24? Well, the 24, because it's got the same spot, right? 24. And then the side that goes with the 12 is the 9. Sorry, I've got this backwards. A little bit sleepy today. That's why I waited to do the review. I've been sleepy the last couple of days. So there's a good setup right there. That will work. Now we can cross multiply right now, but the numbers are kind of large. So rather than cross multiplying right now, maybe I'll reduce this by dividing it by, why not three? And then it becomes an eight and a three. And then I don't have to distribute 12 to 24. 5x plus 2 over 12 equals 8 to 3. Now I've got an easier multiplication to do. So now I can do distribution this way. I can get 15x plus 6. 8 times 12 is 96. 6 from 96 is 90. And that will divide evenly 6 times. Perfect. 6. All right, so polygons each pair are similar. Find the scale factor from the smaller to the larger figure. So the 7 goes with which side? 28, 32, or 24? Hopefully you answered 28. The 8 goes with 32. Pick one of the two sides to go with. So the scale factor is 7 over 28, which does reduce 7 over 28. Or 7 goes into 28 four times, one-fourth. The first shape is one-fourth the size of the second shape. Now it's not to scale. Look, I didn't draw the picture to scale. This obviously isn't seven long and this one's 28 because this one's four times as long if it's 28. But yeah, the picture's not to scale. I'm asking what the scale would be. All right, one to four, if I did draw the picture to scale. All right, here, you can work parts or you can work whole lengths. I prefer to work parts on these questions. So on this line, I've got two and 10, two and 10. 2 divided by 10. On this line, I've got question and 15 equals question and 15. Let's use x instead of question. If you want to reduce this first to have an easier multiplication, reduce it. 2 and 10 can make 1 and 5. You don't have to. 10x equals 30. x is 3. There we go. This length is 50% larger than this length. 10, half of 10 is 5, 
10 plus 5 is 15. 2, half of 2 is 1. 2 plus 1 is 3. Alrighty. Well, I'm going to start this question right here. I'm, I'm going to fill in a 4 right here. Why did I put a 4 there? Because 4 and 8 makes 12. Now again, I can work partial lengths or whole lengths. So here I've got a partial length. Here I've got a whole length. So I've got x plus 5 is on the same line with 30. x plus 5 is on the same line with 30 equals. The reason I needed the 4 here is because that's a partial length. And it goes with the 12. Now if you're welcome to multiply 30 by 4 and then divide by 12 again, you can also reduce this into 1 third before you multiply. That might be a better option. So instead of using 4 twelfths, let's use x plus 5 over 30 equals 1 third. Reduce that fraction. Then I don't have to multiply 4 by 30. And the multiplication is easier here. So 3x plus 15 equals 30. 15 from 30 is 15. And then 15 divided by 3 is 5. x is 5. So that whole length there is 10. And that makes sense. Because look, this is half of that. This would be 10, this would be 20. This whole length here, or not whole length, this partial length of this line, 10 is half of this one, which is 20. It's a 50% ratio. Anyways, 50 points on the back, 5 points each. Good luck coming after school Thursday if you want to ask me some questions.